Well, good morning, everyone. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. We have a fun day today, and we're gonna do quite a bit of traveling around to get to do it. First, I'm gonna take Joff for his walk, as usual, and then you and I are gonna head out to Lancaster to the Antelope Valley because this is the season where the poppies start to bloom, and uh, I wanted to go out and catch it, and I figured, you know, when you think of poppies, what else do you think of? So we're gonna tie that into the vlog and we'll do two or three things while we're out there. First, I want to uh, hit what's called the musical road out there. So Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. If you look over this fence, you see a boxing bag. Well, I, uh, I swore to myself that the next time I went to Lancaster, I was gonna do the, the teenage home of Frank Zappa, but I just, I think where I'm gonna take you instead will make a little bit more sense and it matches up a little bit better with the vlog. And I wanted to hit the poppies while they're happening. Um, it's not the weekend, so there won't be a billion people out there like there usually are. And uh, I went like two years ago and I actually liked it. I thought it was a really cool thing to view. And I think maybe you guys would like to see it too if you never saw those vlogs. over at these hills you can see some of the wildflowers and some of the poppies. Take a look at all the color you're gonna start seeing all this orange and all that all over the place out here. There's some purple. crosses up there. So now we are on the road that is called Musical Road. It's because they put a bunch of those grooves in that when you start driving, it plays a tune. Now depending on how fast you're going, it's how fast the tempo is of the Musical Road. Okay, there's nobody behind me. Here's our warning sign for it, for the musical road. Letting you know, here it is. All right, let's hit it. Okay, here's our sign. It's starting right here where these trees are. That was pretty cool. Now we're gonna head off to the childhood home of a very, very famous woman that we all probably know and love. Died way too young. And when you know that she once lived here in Lancaster when she was a little girl, you almost wonder, why didn't they have somewhere over the rainbow engraved into the road instead? Yep, we're going to the childhood home of Judy Garland. not my fault I keep cleaning the windshield but there are so many butterflies out here as I drive I keep smacking them so forgive me butterfly lovers I'm not doing it intentionally and I also am trying to keep the windshield clean but it's not working too well well you might be surprised to know that when Judy Garland's parents Frank and Ethel became pregnant with Judy they they were not prepared they financially couldn't handle it and it was said that uh, Frank actually went to the family doctor and said, uh, Ethel's pregnant, we just cannot afford to have another baby. And the doctor said, are you asking me to perform an abortion? And Frank said, yeah, I am. And the doctor said, no, I'm not gonna do it. And uh, you go home and tell Ethel that she is to have the kid. And it's kind of weird to think of, um, in those days, abortion was illegal and that there was a possibility that the Dorothy Gale that we all come to know and love from uh, MGM's classic, The Wizard of Oz, and the young actress that we would see in all those Mickey Rooney movies almost wouldn't have been the same person in those movies.
So Judy Garland wasn't born here in Lancaster, California. She was actually born in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, and her father owned a theater there. And the weathers were so cold, and Judy had two older sisters, and he just had this idea that his his daughters would be great performers. Frank wanting to move the family out as close to Hollywood as he could to hopefully get his daughters into the movie business, found a theater here in Lancaster, moved the family here, and the seven bedroom house that I'm about to show you is the house that he purchased for them. Well, this is the house right here. Judy's family would move here in the late 20s when she was about six years old, and they would start performing in theater. She was called Baby. Her name was actually Frances Ethel Gum, named after both her father and her mother. Father being Frank, mother being Ethel. But they always called her Baby Gum. Now as they started performing and doing some local shows at both the theater that the family owned and um, all around the Los Angeles area, they would find out that she was a very, very talented little girl and actually she was the most talented out of all of the kids. Now unfortunately, Ethel decided to pump her daughters full of amphetamines to wake them up and to make them spry every day and then to make sure that they got plenty of sleep she would also give them sleeping pills and that is a habit that would continue from basically the time that she was eight or nine years old all the way through and that would be a problem that she suffered with all the way through her MGM years and then into her death. Now as I understand this house has had a fire on the inside at one point that kind of ravaged a lot of it so much of it isn't still the original but they say that the cabinets and some of the drawers and things like that are um, and I believe this house was up for sale a few years ago and they were actually trying to get it a historical significance so that they could turn it into a museum but I'm guessing by the look of it that they didn't make that happen. Um, that's what they ended up doing with their house in Grand Rapids. It's now a Judy Garland Museum. Now, where did the name Judy Garland come from if she was born Frances Ethel Gum? Well, during one of their performances, uh, the man who had founded the Los Angeles Friars Club, George Jessel, said that the Gum sisters looked like a pretty bundle of garland. And when they had first met with MGM for one of the first movies that they would be performing in together, the three sisters, they said, yeah, the Gum Sisters doesn't really sound good. You should come up with something else. So that's where they came up with the Garland Sisters. And since little Judy, well, little Frances Ethel, was always called Baby Gum, she was tired of that name. And um, there was a Hoagie Carmichael song that was popular in the day that she liked called Judy. So she became Judy Garland. So the Gum family and the Garland Sisters Performing Act would live here until they got a deal with MGM while well, Judy did. The family would move to Hollywood. And sadly, just two months after Judy would get her deal with MGM, her father would end up passing away. And so the sisters and Ethel and Judy would all move to Hollywood together. At Judy's house being over here on the corner, it's kind of interesting to know that right across the street is now the school district building and it used to be an elementary school and it's very likely that that's the same elementary school that a young Judy Garland probably would have attended kindergarten. So here you can see all the windows and everything of the school are boarded up. Now of course once Judy moved to Hollywood she was then attending the MGM school. She was in classes with Elizabeth Taylor and Ava Gardner and people like that. And this is also when she would really develop body issues because they said Louis B. Mayer would always come on set and call her his little hunchback. And so she always never saw herself as beautiful and always would have a um, stigma to her looks, always worried about her weight. They even said that she used to smoke a lot of cigarettes during the filming of the Wizard of Oz. Wow, take a look at this guy's yard. He's got a little bit of decoration going on. Nice. All kinds of stuff. Little bridge. Nice. So like I mentioned, it's poppy season. And right out here in Lancaster is a really famous Antelope Valley poppy preserve. And I wanna take you guys and show you. And since 
Judy Garland is primarily probably best known for The Wizard of Oz playing Dorothy Gale and there's that famous moment in the movie where the Wicked Witch puts her in a field of poppies and you see her all of a sudden smelling these poppies and then fainting to the ground. I said, you know what, if we're going to Lancaster and Judy Garland's childhood home is right there, makes sense to tie the two together, doesn't it? So let's go see some poppies together. So in 1935, Judy Garland got her contract with MGM. In 1939, she would make The Wizard of Oz. Well, she made the movie in 38, but it came out in 39. Oh, I see a sign right here that says Poppy Reserve, so I thought it was called a Preserve. Reserve and Preserve. I went, I'll have to look up what the difference is because I've seen both of those for nature. Look over at that hillside over there. That's where we're headed. We're about five miles away. We've hit a bit of a slowdown in traffic because everybody's stopping to check out this hill, which I checked out a couple of years ago, so I want to go to a different one. How awesome is this though? What a great view. People are just pulling off and finding a place to hang out. Very relaxing. All right, here we are. All right, I just parked and we're gonna hike all the way up to that. I wanted to bring Ja, but I was pretty sure this was the policy from last time we were here. I started to drive in, but then I saw how long the line was and that it wasn't really moving, so I figured there probably wasn't much parking. So I just went out and parked on the street and I'm gonna walk up. It actually smells really, really great out here. Warning. Oh, how amazing. They do have a little bit of a walkway created that goes up and around some of this so that people don't have to walk out there and squash all of them. But people do anyway. All right, as you can see, not too far for the loops. Look at that. How amazing. Now in the times that I've come out here, I've never seen red, I've always seen purple, orange, and yellow. Now the reason nobody's in this section is because they have a sign up here that says it's closed. Sorry. So I believe I read online that this happens every year from late February till early May. So if you can make it out here anytime during that, you can see all this. Little photo shoot going on out here. Nice breeze out here today. Here's a view from the first stop. Yeah, there's so many of them out here. I remember the first time we came, the sun wasn't out yet, and I was getting all bummed because I was like, is this all? And then when the sun came out, they bloomed a little bit more. And they do put some rest areas out here and picnic tables. Oh yeah, it's really thick right over in here. All right, gang, I think we're gonna start heading our way out of here, making our way back around. Hope you all enjoyed our trip out here to Lancaster. I was actually shocked for a weekday to see this many people out here. Last time I came, I came on a Sunday and I said, no, 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 this time we'll do it on a weekday. Probably nobody will be here. Nope, always people here. And it's only 79 today, but it can get pretty hot and sunny sometimes, so yeah, maybe an umbrella is not the worst idea. 
One last amazing view before we go. Now if you look off in the distance out there, you can see the yellow ones. Then over here are some orange ones again. I'm seeing a lot of blackbirds out here. Oh, here's a nice batch coming up. Oh, there's some water. All right, we had to come to a car wash because when I got out to pump gas, the front of my car is covered in yellow butterfly matter. Let's leave it at that home and had some mail had an Anthony Bourdain shirt which is rad he's wearing his Ramon shirt on there that is classic look he's eating a heart hilarious and then I got some Eddie Van Halen shoes with the last of my gift card money from Christmas kind of like one of his Frankenstrats kind of cool I actually think these will be good travel shoes at least through for going through TSA because they're slip-ons they don't actually come with laces but I love that they put the Eddie Van Halen 5150 and the EVH on there well all right Lionhearts we are gonna call it a day yes I did get a little bit of Sun today as you can see want to send big shout out thank yous to new patreons Mary Netto and Gavin thank you for becoming patreons Thank you all for watching. Thank you to those who choose to support this channel through Patreon or PayPal or wherever you do it through Merch5. Thank you all. Have a great night. We will see you all, as usual, again tomorrow. Goodbye.